Hey, it's Jermichael Jordan, and I want to welcome you back to Decoded. Decoded. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Decoded. We here another week, episode number three now. I think we had episode three, and I'm so excited that you guys are joining us. You guys continue to hit me up in the inbox, and you continue to send me text messages. Let me know just how much you're enjoying Decoded and how much is blessing you. And so, uh, my hope and prayer is that we continue to do that and continue to bring you quality content. Continue to bring you conversations that are very pertinent to where you are, maybe in your life right now. And so uh, thank you again for joining us. But I'm telling you, we are in for a treat today. I have another special guest with me, and she's more than just a guest. She family, y'all. She real life is family, and I love her so much. And I just thought, man, who can I bring on this show that I think the people going to love, has an awesome story, and is really at the place of her life where I feel like a lot of our listeners, a lot of us are right now. And that is in the process of discovering our purpose, our mission, who we are. And maybe if you haven't even discovered it yet, we're in the process of it. And I think this person right here that you're going to meet in just a few moments, uh, you're going to fall in love with her. Because I did the third time I met her. Not the first time. The first time we had beef. We had beef the first time. Like, I didn't know how this was going to go. But we good now. Um, and the person I'm talking about is no other than my sister, Tamia. She is my sister through marriage. Uh, my wife, Amanda. And this is her uh, sister, what do you call it, sister in love. I mean, we all just want to be family. So uh, we're going to get into the dynamics of that. But I definitely want to give an opportunity for her to introduce herself to you. Take it away to me. Who are you? Who are you to me? <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me um, to be on your podcast. I remember when you first started and I was so excited. I was driving to work, listening to Decoded. And I was like, this is so good. J. Mike is like the perfect person to, to do a podcast. So thank you. I am honored um, to be on here with you. Um, I am, my name is Tamia, um, well, Crawford, I just got married. I haven't changed my last name yet, but <laughs> so it's Tamia Watson Crawford. Um, and I am a physical therapist, um, by trade. I, that's what I do. Um, I'm a physical therapist, um, graduated from physical therapy school in 2018. I worked in an outpatient. Um, so what that means is just when you go, uh, like if you get a have a surgery or if you have back pain, just go to that specific facility. Um, and um, I just do therapy and get you back to ho hopefully get you back to um, where you need to be. So I did that for three years. Uh, and then I got married in 2021, August of 2021. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> I almost forgot. Um, I got married um, August of 2021. And when we my husband and I actually met in college, um, long time ago, but we started, we reconvened and, and started to really talk to one another and at the end of 2018, December of 2018. And he was in the United Kingdom playing basketball. So that was just like, a, woo, he's still playing, but I love basketball. Basketball is like our family, like thing. And for him to still be playing basketball, I remember watching him at UCA and like, just just saw him playing um, overseas and I saw him post something on Facebook and I was just intrigued. And I was like, this is cool. This is a cool article. Like, thank you for posting. And literally we haven't stopped talking since then. So because he was traveling, that was something that kind of was in the back of my mind was like, wow, you know, if this was to work out, you know, maybe we can travel together because one of my loves and passions is just traveling and just seeing the world and meeting new people. And because he was already doing that, I thought, wow, this would be kind of cool if that's what ends up happening. So fast forward <laughs> to 2021, end of 2021, I literally three years after we started talking, I came over to, we are now in Denmark, Europe. I am here with my husband. We're traveling and I came over here December 24th. So literally three years that Wow, that just kind of registered in my mind. It's been three years since since we started talking. And now I'm traveling with my husband in Europe. And yeah. That is uh, she's married now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see a whole wife out here, man. And uh, 
you first of all, let me just say, you have always been a brainiac, like just just a big book of knowledge and information. Is there anything I need to know about health, body wise, and even just regular trivial information? Tamia is who I'm probably going to call, text, or ask about it because you just know too much I mean, for no reason at all. <laughs> She's like the perfect Jeopardy uh, or what? Well, family Feud guest. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so for you, I guess you could say, edu- what would you say has always been the driving force of motivation behind you? What pushes you? Because you're one of the most motivated people I have ever met. If you put your mind to something, you're going to do it. You might get frustrated. You might get annoyed. You might feel like quitting, but you're not. Because this is not who you are. What, where, where do you get your motivation from? What, what inspires you? J. Mike, that I don't know. Lately, I have not been feeling motivated. So for you to tell me like I am one of the most motivated people and like what motivates me or like that is I'm really glad to hear that. What is my driving yeah. force? Uh, that is a great question. I think. I don't know. I've always just had this desire. I, I have this desire to just. My driving force. That is a great question. Okay. Let me get to the bottom of it. My driving force, I really do think that my biggest driving force is like, I love helping people and I love um, working with people and I love um, doing things with people. And I think every aspect of my life has been kind of a stepping stone towards helping people or, or just being around people more. I don't even know if that's making sense, but I also am like a student of life. Like I love learning. So I don't feel like I've ever learned enough. And I think that's what drives me as well to learn new things. I'm always like, you know, I am the girl who's going to go to Google and look it up before I even say anything about it because I'm like, I got to make sure it's true. Number one. And I like to prove people wrong. (laughs) I'm going to always try to prove somebody wrong. It's it's kind of a fault, but (laughs) it's who I am. Um, And I just, I love learning. I love seeing new things and having new experiences. And I think that's what keeps me going. Like literally, from when I was younger up like up until now, it's the new experiences, but the new experiences with people, if that makes sense. Um, not just new experiences for myself, but new experiences with other people and like introducing myself to other aspects of life or whatever. Other people's journeys are like huge for me, which is why physical therapy was like, wow, because I literally get to be a part of someone's journey. You know, that's perfect. That's perfect. Because you, you kind of segue into where I wanted to go with that. And I do believe, because I'm one of those people, I believe that whatever, whoever you are, what drives you, what motivates you, what pushes you stems from something that you either saw, experienced, or were, was exposed to at an early age, right? And so you said one of the things that motivates you is helping people, it's giving back to people, or it's getting involved in other people's journey or their life experience. Can you say that you found that later in life or it was really kind of incubated for you growing up in a childhood. Like what was your life, your uh, upbringing like? Your experience? So I, I will say that I really, really, really got into it more so when I was in college. Um, that that's when I really, one of my, I am a Delta. I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority incorporate. Uh, <laughs> and um, before I pledged, there was a Delta on campus. Um, she was a president. And she, one of the things she said was like, um, your life is no longer yours the day that you meet somebody else. And so that was something that like, Mm. like totally registered for me because it was like, that's so true. Like, why are we here if we're not here? Like, there's no purpose if you're not here to serve others or to give to others or to just laugh with others. Like, that was so big for me. But growing up, um, I just had like my, I always had like my group, uh, my core group from middle school, my core group from high school, which kind of transitioned my middle school group from to high school. And we're just a good, we were just always just people who like loved life and like loved each other and loved just, and I think that was where it came from. I don't really know. I mean, my family, we're super loving towards one another. Like we, mm-hmm. um, my sisters and brothers, like it's six of us blended. And then I have my siblings in Chicago too. And it was just always like love and like, I just always, you know, looked up to my sisters who was like Amanda, who Mm. was always helping other people or doing something or, and then I was always kind of that for my little sister. So I kind of think it both, it really projected when I got to college, but just throughout my life, Mm. it's always been, you know, family first. Like my mom comes from a family of like 41st cousins and it's always been kind of that 
I always like crave to be around my friends, around my family and around people. And it's just that energy. Just, I just kind of translated that to what, who I am as an adult and what I do for a living. For sure. For sure. You said something early, you said something earlier on, you were saying that, that life is all about investing or giving into other people. Like if you're not living your life to benefit someone else in a way to, to bring them along, to help them, to coach them, then what are you doing it for? One of the things I feel like life is all about investing. When you invest in people, the return is so much greater. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the return isn't always instantaneous. Sometimes it's not always, you know, immediately after it happens. But sometimes what you invest in others comes back and it blesses you on the back end uh, in so many different ways. Like you never know what you put out into the world today may bless your kids, your grandkids. And you've been looking for it to happen. Like, oh, I just helped so-and-so last week. It may not happen that yeah. fast, right? That's not how it happens. But life is all about the law of reciprocation. What you put out there, you eventually get back. And so for me, I can always say, I can definitely testify that you have always been a helper. Like, you've always been a helper. You come into a situation, and it's almost like you ask the question, how can I make this better? I don't care if we had a family event. You're like, okay, let's, let's do something. Let's play a game. Let's do something. Let's make it exciting. And so uh, one of the things that I, you mentioned that I heard is, uh, let's talk about Kristen for a second, right? So Kristen is your little sister. Um, she plays for UConn. Is an incredible basketball player. Was the number one basketball player in the country. What was that, 2018? Was it 18? Mm -hmm. 18? Uh, phenomenal basketball player. Phenomenal basketball player. But you did something in the middle of your career, I would say education career, that kind of just blew me away. You actually took a moment, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the way that I saw it. I felt like you took a moment out of focusing on Tamia, what she really wanted to do, and really took the opportunity to focus on Kristen and assist her and help her in that transition of just being a support system, but also because you're smart, realizing that, hey, there's ways that we all could benefit from this. And when I say ways we can all benefit from this, you will continue to learn the game as you were helping your sister transition into the game. Does that make yes. sense? Can you can you explain that situation in your relationship? So there are kind of several times in Kristen's life where I I, um, I just wanted to be close to her. I wanted to be close to, to home and close to her because I really have made myself her second mom. <laughs> And um, which that's what sisters are anyway, just an, a just a, a different version of someone that a person looks up to um, that's not your mom. So when I was in physical therapy school, actually, no, when I applied for physical therapy school, um, one of the things that that I was really like kind of debating was, OK, cause I, I applied to three different schools. I applied to a school in Dallas, a school in Chicago and one school in Arkansas. And in my mind, I was like, man, if I go to the school, I like I I've always had this desire to leave. I'm, I was born in Chicago. My dad still lives in Chicago. So it was always this desire inside of me that I was supposed to be somewhere else, um, which hindsight now, I don't think that way. I, I feel like my life is exactly how it's supposed to be. But growing up, I always felt like, man, I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. But I didn't realize back then that the reason why God was keeping me in was Honestly, it probably was for my sister. And I and I and I think that like looking back on this, it always ended up that way. I got into one physical therapy school <laughs> and I got I didn't get into the other ones, which, you know, I was kind of devastated. But then I'm like, you know what? It's purpose in this. So, you know, and it's close to home. It's where I went to undergrad, the University of Central Arkansas. And I get to watch my sister's high school basketball career. It literally fell within the exact same time that she was going to be playing high school basketball, which meant that, you know, I could travel with my sister um, to AAU games. You know, she played USA basketball. She would have um, training camp in Colorado Springs. Like my, it was like my school and um, it just balanced out to where I could be with her in that time. And during those times where she was going to make one of the biggest decisions of her life. So then fast forward, she uh, makes the decision to um, actually her senior year was 2017 to 2018. And I was doing my clinical rotations, which meant that I would spend five to 10 weeks, um, depending on which one it was, in a specific facility to do physical therapy. Um, and so two of those ended up me being in Houston and Memphis, but it fell at a time um, where 
I didn't miss any of my sister's high school basketball season. Like I was pretty much mm. there the her, for her entire senior season. And I also was able to travel mm. with her as she went on visits. Um, so I went to the Tennessee visit. I went to, it was a couple of them I wasn't able to go on, but um, I had a really good friend of mine, Micah. She stepped in where I couldn't. And that, that goes to show you like my whole village was right there with her. Um, so then, so that happened. And then, Fast forward again. Um, I don't know. Did I touch on what you were talking about? I haven't. I, I don't know yet. You did. You did. But you said something, that I, and, and this is where I was hoping it was going to go. You opened up a, a can for me. And one of those things is, I, I always feel like in life we have this set plan. Like we have this set idea of how life is supposed to go. And then once we get to that point, we're like, okay, it's about to happen. Things just shift. Things just just turn around and it blindsides. You're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. That's not what I had in mind. And what do I do now? Right. So for me, it almost goes back to what you were saying when you were in school. You applied to all these different schools. You got into one school. Right. So for me, when I graduated from high school, my grades were not the best, but they were not terrible by a long shot. <laughs> And I applied to so many different schools. I mean, I applied to Howard. I applied to UVA. I applied to MTSU. I applied to TSU. I applied to Austin P. I applied to all these schools. And every school denied me. Every school denied me. I was literally down to one school. And the last school to accept me was the University of Memphis. Really? Had no idea. <laughs> really. But, like. I have no idea how that happened, why that happened. And it was the last school. I was losing hope. I was losing faith. I'm like, bro, my whole future is a wrap. But then so many things almost like domino effect happened after getting accepted to that school. Getting into Memphis introduced me to your sister. Uh, We ended up, we didn't date through college. We ended up dating on the tail end because it's almost like God plays chess moves. He allows you to experience this here. He allows you to experience this there. And then before you know it, you look up 10 years from now and everything is like a big pot of gumbo and it makes this great pot of gumbo yeah. or this great cake. But you didn't know that that piece and that piece is going to tie with this piece. It just looks chaotic. And so for me, I know that when, when I got the decline from all those schools and got accepted to Memphis, I got to a place where I was like, Lord, I don't know what you got me here to do, but I'm going to just live here and I'm going to just ride the wave. Now, I say all that to say this. I know you. And sometimes... There can be a sense of anxiety. There can be a sense of fear. There can be a sense of, oh, my God, panic. Like, I know you like, what is happening? This is not how this is supposed to go. And I remember specifically sitting on a couch with you. I can't remember. It was 2017, 2016, like that. And you were just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm going to Atlanta. I don't know if I'm going here. I don't know what to do. And you were freaking out. That was, right? yes, yes. <laughs> Can you explain that moment to me? Why you were freaking out and just what was going through your mind at the time? So of you tried to discover your your future. I remember that, and it was when it was when I was trying to decide if I wanted to stay home and work or if I wanted to finally leave. <laughs> like because that was my life goal was to leave, get out of Arkansas. And <laughs> here I am, thirty, and I'm just not getting out. But I got out anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I like it was I remember it was um I had just graduated in 2018 and I'm a planner I always know what's coming up but for whatever reason when it came to physical therapy because even when I got into physical therapy school like that was just kind of not according to plan because um I actually didn't know I wanted to be a physical therapist until um, my my second senior year, I went through five years of school um, and I was a biology major and I was like, I'm gonna go to medical school. Then I was like, no, I'm not going to medical school. And so I just stayed. Oh, and then I did some observation and I figured I was going to go to physical therapy school, but I was late to applying. So I ended up taking a year off and I was like, God, if you don't get me into this school, that means that I'm not supposed to be a physical therapist. But if you let me in, I'm gonna do the work and I know I'm gonna take care of business. So he got me into UCA and that was my answer. Like, here it is so same thing happened fast forward three years from that moment in 2018 when I graduated I didn't like all my classmates were doing interviews and like they knew their plan and where they wanted to work and I'm like (laughs) the only thing I knew was that I was taking a month off after I graduated that's the only thing I knew (laughs) explain and explain that right there too because I think that's important for a lot of our listeners to hear like 
I think sometimes we 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 take for granted for the space or the moment that God has us in, and we can get in our head and we can get in our emotions starting to look at everybody else and where they are and how things are working out in their life, and you're almost like, Lord, did you forget about me? Like, what are you going? Like, what was going on in your head right there? And and not to say that because I know y'all relationship, I know y'all were close. There was not a jealousy thing, but there was a thing of like, what do I do? Yeah. You know, there's this moment of trying to figure out. Can you explain that moment? And honestly. That's still like an everyday type of battle, of, especially with social media and just you don't even like we don't even really people aren't really putting out with who they really are. But for whatever reason, we always look at the glitz and glamour and we just say, you know, where's our glitz and glamour? And we don't even reflect and, and be grateful for the glitz and glamour we do have. And that's one thing that I have been like mindfully doing these this past couple of weeks but we'll get to that um so back then <laughs> um when my classmates were um doing that honestly i had i actually had a sense of peace because i like because god had got me into physical therapy school and i knew that you know you actually you and my um my bible study leader which is also my best friend's mom y'all both said if god gives you options that means that you know no matter which way you choose, you're going to like, it's it's going to be okay. He's going to bless both of them. So you can't really make a bad decision. And you actually said the same thing to me when we talked recently. Mm-hmm. Like, and that is like a consistent, like, I have to always kind of keep that in my mind. Like, okay, God gave me these options for a reason. It's not like I'm choosing between life and death. You know what I mean? I'm choosing between life and life. Like, and, and I have to be mm-hmm. mindful of that. What What is it? And I'm also, and it's also not that I'm, when my when my classmates are applying to these schools, their life is totally different from mine. And literally, God bless me. I had my last rotation. It was right before I graduated. I was working with a um, black male physical therapist, which is not a lot of us. Um, and I was at the clinic with him and he was like, I want to keep you on. I didn't have to do, I mean, I had to do like a baby interview, but because I was there for 10 weeks, for a clinical rotation, that was my interview. Um, and mm-hmm. my clinical instructor was great and we still have a great relationship now because we worked together for the last three years. But he said, he was, they literally were like, you know, if you want to stay, stay. And my mind was like, man, but I really, it's time for me to get out. I want to do travel therapy. Like I need to go, mm-hmm. like what is happening? So that's when me and you talked and you, we were just talking about whether or not I should do travel or whether or not I should stay. And it was just kind of like this big, decision in my mind and I'm like you know what who this is a blessing number one what like why would I not take this opportunity to learn from somebody who has been doing this for a long time who would literally take me under their wing and it was and I do not regret that decision like at all like that was I I am grateful for my the last three years of my life the relationships that I've made you know the the growth that I've had um and I also always say some reason I always say that the reason I stayed in Arkansas, like even though my husband was not in Arkansas, I just feel like if I had gone to do travel, I would have been so distracted. Like, like I don't, not only say distracted, but I just don't think that we would be who we are if I hadn't left Arkansas at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it was literally destined for me to begin my travel life and the life that I've been trying to do with my husband and not by myself. And um, mm-hmm. so. I don't know if that answers your question, yeah. but <laughs> no, it, it did, it did, it did. It, you definitely answered my question, and you also proved my favorite Bible verse. You confirmed it again and again as it continues to be confirmed in my life, and I'm pretty sure yours is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. God says, "For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to uh, to 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 not harm you, God, but give you a life." You know, and so I feel like we all get to that moment where we get to that Jeremiah twenty nine moment where we're like, "Okay, are we gonna trust?" what he says, are we going to trust what he's, what he's revealing and showing us, or are we just going to freak out and go do something crazy to the left or to the right and, and really not trust him? He got plans for us, right? Yeah. And his our life is already planned out. He knew what the, the end was going to be from the beginning, and it's just us living enough and trusting enough to catch up to what he said. And I think now that you're living proof of what believing and having faith that he's going to do just that shows you you're sitting in Denmark right now and you were sitting in a den in Arkansas freaking out but look where you are now right (laughs) right so would you say that I mean I know you're going to say it but I just want to hear you say it would you say that moment in time strengthen your faith and belief and trust in God 
or it strained it? What would you say happened? So at that time, in that particular moment, it did strengthen my faith. Same thing with me getting into physical therapy school. It did strengthen my faith. But I am the type of person that forget. I'm one of those believers that be like, that totally forget the, the, the good and the blessings and all the great things that God has done for me. Yeah. And I start to stress about the next thing. And so here I am, fast forward to now, moving to Denmark. Um, and honestly, I have been... <sighs> I have been kind of tested more so like financially recently mm -hmm. and which is like a normal adulting life. You know, I just went from, you know, having my own job, making my own money, doing my own thing. And now I leave my job and not to say I don't have my own money, but now it's more so, mm -hmm. you know, I am my purpose now has changed. Like my purpose now, God yeah. wants me to or not. I wouldn't even say change, but like the help that I was giving to a bunch of other people as my patients now is to help my husband and to be a wife yeah. and to be a steward of the home and like, and to just be, um, and to help my sister because I'm still on the phone with her pretty much every day or every other day. And we're still talking through like helping her get through certain situations. Cause now she's transitioning from college to professional, you know? So that's another mm -hmm. aspect of it. And then, um, so now it's just, I'm not as, I guess it was hard for me to look at myself as needed and as, as not worthy, but you go from, you know, being a physical therapist and people coming to you with questions and coming to you with, you know, you helping them. And then all of a sudden that mm. changes. And, and I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but this is literally the reality. Mm. We, we finally get into yeah. our blessing and then instead of us understanding and being happy about our blessing we start to find something else to to stress about or something else to worry about or something else to and go ahead <laughs> that's perfect I, I'm not, that, that's perfect because i don't i don't want you to leave that moment right because I, I feel like we live in a society we live in a generation that is always like if i can just get there if i could just get there and then you get there not realizing you don't even realize that you've gotten there until you get there and then once you're there you're like there's more i gotta do more this isn't what it feels like I was chasing this thing or I was chasing this dream and the excitement of this. And now that I have it, this ain't even all that it was cracked up to be, right? And I think God matures us at different levels. And you were saying something that you were saying. You were like, you went through all that. He teaches you in stages. So the things that you were helping your little sister with early on, now you're married. Now you, you're you one with two people. And you're using some of the same things that you learned or did with her, with him, that is number one going to improve his life. And now what you've done is you've taken everything that you have to offer. You've extended yourself to other people. And so many people are being blessed by that. And you don't realize that while other people are getting blessed, so are you in so many different ways. And like I said earlier, it may not show up until later. And I just think that you now, when I see you smile and I see you talk, you're at a place to where you're kind of like, you know what? I don't have it all figured out yet. I don't know what the end is going to be but I've been here before mm -hmm. and I've been here before. And now you have the confidence. Like if I've been here before, this is going to be a breeze. I just got to trust, continue to trust. Yes. Right. And, and trusting because I am a control person that is, God has uh, been tugging on my heart for even the past like three years. And Robert is a, my husband is a testament to that. Like he's like, Tamia, you have to just, just truly like, just trust. You got to trust God. And he, that's his life. Like we talked about that before. His mm. life is that like basketball contracts. Sometimes they come, you get cut. You don't know where you're going to be the next year. Like that's his life. Like he's used to this, like being in another country, being back in the States, not knowing where he's going to be until literally a month before it's time for him to leave. And I'm like, <sighs> that's God. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle that, but it literally has strengthened yeah. his faith so much. And it's like something that I admire like a lot about him is that no matter what, he's just like, it's not that big of a deal. Like God has gotten me here before and he's gotten me through this before. And at the end of the day, the worst that can happen is not even that bad. So I'm just going to keep living and keep trusting. And so for me, this, me leaving my job is probably the biggest um, and traveling with him is probably the biggest leap of faith that I've ever made in my life. Um, and I think that part, um, I let fear creep inside of me. I let 
because right now I am literally trying to transition myself into um, more of an entrepreneur, more of a self-made self, you know, financially. Like I figure out how to make my own money without um, having to rely so heavily on other people. I I am still um, lic a licensed physical therapist. And when it comes down to it, I will cool. take, I want to do contract work. So do travel therapy, but all in all, I want to be able to have like time freedom and, um, and just, just freedom to do whatever I want to do has always been the goal for me. And maybe that's my driving force. Maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going back to I the think, conversation. I think, but <laughs> I think, I think you're decoding these things. Right. I feel like you're discovering. <laughs> and that, but all jokes aside, that's what it's, it's, that's what it's about. A lot of people, a lot of times we can't just, we can't get to that point because we don't even know what we want. Why? Because we don't have these discussions with ourselves out loud. Right. Everything that we do, we internalize. And I was telling somebody the other day, it's kind of like uh, your mind, your brain is like sometimes having a, a pecan inside of a, a, a peanut can and you're just shaking it around, right? And it's not going anywhere. It's just hitting up and it's just, it's just being loud. It's just loud and obnoxious. But it's not until you take the lid off that it, you're able to breathe and get everything yes. out. And now you can eat the peanut, the pecan. Now you can grow another pecan tree. You can do all types of things. But it first has to be unleashed, right? right. And I think that's what convers having conversations with people can do. And not only that, I think that's why mental health is so important right now because people aren't talking. People aren't mm -hmm. sharing their true emotions, right? They're either they're doing it for for the gram when they're not being honest and not being truthful, or they're locked locked in the house because of the pandemic and they're not able to get out with people, and so they're just living with all of this stuff inside of their head, inside of their heart. And so with you, I'm pretty sure it's difficult not being home with your family or not being able to touch and really get to where you need to go and the people you love. And you're so, so far away. Let me just say that I commend you. That is brave. That is bold. That is amazing. You and have you ever had you ever been to Denmark before? What did I've you know never, about Denmark before you? I've that never way? been out of the country, like ever been out of. I mean, besides wow. going to Bahamas or Mexico, like I've been to South America and um, the like Bahamas. But as far as like being in Europe, like overseas, like I've never been overseas. This is my first, very first trip to Europe, and I'm actually I I I'm loving it. Like Bree, our sister, other our sister in love, mm. um, she asked, she was like, "Do you miss home?" And honestly, I don't miss home. I miss my family, but I do not miss, like, it's something about walking outside and seeing something different every time I go outside. Or, you know, literally when I go to the grocery store, I don't have a clue what some of this stuff is. And I have to, like, you know me, <laughs> miss search a lot, miss Google a lot. I have to, yeah. like, translate it. And so I start to learn new words in the language. And um, so I am very excited like this past weekend we went to a different city in Denmark and we were able to just experience a whole different like culture they had like I love food and the, they have a, a it's called um street food uh, it was the place the city was called Aarhus and it's Aarhus street food and we went there and they had like just it was like a big old cafeteria of like different restaurants <laughs> it was like 13 14 mm. different like um culture of food so it's like Mexican Turkish um, they had an Afro Caribbean one, but it wasn't really hitting on. Them. <laughs> like, they had some jerk chicken that was not jerking. So, but That's but the, just to be able to experience that and um and just that I mean and I think and it's this kind of goes hand in hand. God literally is going to take care of you because we have there's a couple here. Um, he, the her. He plays on the team. The guy plays on the team, and he's really close to Robert. But his girlfriend is from Denmark. She's um, Nigerian and Danish, so she's she's mixed. But literally, they have been like a blessing, like to be able to have a couple here that will take you where. Like she's just like she's taking me under her wing. Like she's like inviting me to her house. We've watched the games together. That's who we went to Aarhus with. That's where she's from. Like. And it's just been like a blessing. Like I really would like I was talking about, I was like, we had so much fun this weekend. I am so thankful for them. Like for us to come here, you know, be in a place. Denmark is like, so this time of the year, it's cold a lot and the days are short. So it's like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You will have sun, but everything else after that is dark. It's like this <laughs> mm -hmm. um, or it's getting there or whatever. Um, 
so it's not a very bright, but when the sun comes out like it's beautiful like it's it's like you take advantage of that sun being out because it's like oh you don't get to see it as much and it might be you know some days it might be three days in a row where it rains and it's cold but i said all that to say to have somebody here that you know knows like they're danish so she knows the culture she, she we've had conversations long conversations about the differences between denmark and america and just to have that like god has literally like made this process that much easier to be in a different country that's amazing that's amazing exposure is everything and i wish everyone could travel i wish everybody could leave their environment at least one time when i say leave their environment i mean literally uproot themselves travel to a different culture a different country and just get to see the world and i know there are so many different things that that keeps people from doing that but if you're ever blessed with the opportunity to do that or even just take a chance to do that don't let fear of the unknown or being uncomfortable stop you from doing that because uh, when you do that you really chokehold your destiny your future of you know just what that might be trying to show you or expose you to one of the greatest things that have ever happened in my life is being blessed with the opportunity to be exposed to different cultures, different people, different environments, simply because I had different type of people around me, right? They say your life will go in the direction of the, the, your closest five friends, right? So if you can look at your top five friends and they're all the same, they like the same thing, they wear the same thing, they believe the same thing, eat the same thing, it's only a matter of time before you fall into that category and you become that sixth friend, right? Always keep someone around you who, number one, inspires you, someone who motivates you, someone who uh, encourages you, someone who will challenge you, and then someone who is far ahead of you that you can literally look up at them and say, wow, that's, 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 that's somewhere I might want to be. That's unique, right? Always have a diversity, a diverse group of friends or individuals around your life that just push you. And I think you being in Denmark, you, when you come back home, you're going to be showing us and telling us things, exposing us to experiences we didn't get to live through because you did. So, so many people live by, are living vicariously through you right now, and that's why I'm one of them. So, <laughs> I, I say I got to get to Denmark, so you, you learn the place first and let me know how it's working. You got to – everybody, <laughs> I, I truly believe if, if possible – Honestly, start with just leaving your state because I know people that haven't even really left their state. Start with leaving your specific town, your state. And then because I was able I was blessed to travel playing basketball growing up, traveling with my sister like that. Traveling throughout the country was like uh, like that was just my life. And and I was I'm so grateful for that. Um, But to be able to travel to a different country like I, I told Robert, I said, I wouldn't mind staying in Europe for like like him not playing basketball, like just living in Europe for a few years, just having that experience. Like, you know, we hear about like when Kobe Bryant, you know, grew up in Italy and, and, and wherever he was, I don't know where he was from, but he he spoke all these languages. Mm -hmm. That seems so far fetched. Like what is this black dude doing all the way over there? But then now it's definitely not as far fetched as it actually seems me being here. Like, okay, that makes sense. Like his dad played basketball over there or whatever. Like, and but I wouldn't even like I I said Robert if you stop playing basketball I would want to bring my family to Europe just to be the mm-hmm. person here that they can come visit and you know come outside of of the United States because they came to visit you know me in Europe or whatever or us in Europe I don't know if it's gonna work out that way but I just put it in the air and the atmosphere mm-hmm. so <laughs> we'll see how it goes now that's real <laughs> that's real and you have to speak things into existence right. So when you speak it, you have to speak it first before you yeah. see it. So let's let's switch change gears real quick. Um, you're married, right? And I don't even know if I want how deep I want to go in this because I feel like I want to save y'all for a relationship conversation <laughs> eventually soon. Bring you and Robert on because I know y'all think different. Yes. <laughs> but uh, how how has the transition of being single to being married? How has that been for you? And then you not you're not just single, then married. You're now from single to married to a whole different country, which means that you can't get mom. You can't go to mama house right now without having problems. Like, how is this transition? Like, you out there, you out that's, there. You and him are out That's there. facts. How's that's that so true because I literally said to him the other day, I was like, I can't just go to my friends because that's what I would do. I would go to my friend's house or like, or just hang out with my friends and all of that. Like, we here together. And <laughs> honestly. And truthfully, we have been like we have been really good. Like uh, we we don't we're not we argued more when we were away from each other because we were a long distance relationship um, up until 
we got married. Literally, like maybe a couple months before mm-hmm. we got married, we were long distance. Like he was either in Vietnam or in the UK or in Tulsa, and I was in Arkansas. And so we would, you know, see we would spend time with each other. He would come to my apartment and stay for long periods of time and stuff like that. But we were pretty much a long distance relationship. Um. So for us to this is this is actually new and um, but it's it's hasn't been like. We have our differences. I mean, I think it's a men and women thing or something. I just told my mom this the other day. I'm like, men are just different. <laughs> like like yeah. living with another person, you just start to realize, like, no matter how hard you may say something or ask for something or whatever, like, you just have to be okay and be patient with the fact that they're just different. They grew up different. He grew up different. I grew up different. How I see things, what I see on the floor, he doesn't see those things. He just kind of walks over <laughs> And we just have to like, I have to be, um, you, it's not, it's not easy, especially since I told you, like, I went from being a physical therapist, you know, having my own apartment, like doing my own thing to now everything I do is with my husband. And I'm more so like, you know, helping him to, you know, because he has to go to practice, like he has to, you know, be present every single day. And so I'm, I'm just, I just want to, I'm here to help that be just a little bit easier, a little bit easier for him. But I am also a very like, you don't see that plate on the table. <laughs> you don't like, and, and I have to like, yeah. I have.